We are live. Welcome to Pete's Twitch and Prompted, the very first episode of a new streaming show from Brunch. We got Will DeFreeze of Circling Back, Sunday Scaries, and my work that one time fame. What up, Will? Thank you for having me. Always a pleasure to hang out with you guys virtually. Nice to meet both of you uh, again. I apologize in advance for the background that I have going on as we are painting in our studio right now because, I mean, DJ, you have like a full-blown, you know, beautiful scene back here. You have, I mean, you have, I was going to say, you have by far the best background out of all of us. The good news is that you can, nobody can see any of them because our cams are so vertical that, like, it's just your face, right, in <laughs> filling up the entire thing. So no backgrounds being seen at all here. Now how will people okay. know that I play guitar? That's right. You got to just hold it right in front of your face. Famously, I put a guitar behind me when I stream, so everybody knows, oh, he must be cool. <laughs> and it still doesn't work. No, it doesn't. Hey, Prompted is a show where we take Prompt Twitter and make a show out of it. It's the first show ever where we say, hey, give us a question and we'll answer it. It's cutting edge state-of-the-art, brilliant. We kicked it around on this week's episode, and we did one prompt that potentially changed both mine and Pete's lives. We went on Patreon and solicited some prompts from all the listeners, patreon.com slash listen to brunch. You gave some great prompts. We're going to kick those around uh, this evening, but we're going to start by giving Will the prompt that we did yesterday first off will do you understand the game here i do understand as the as the kids say these days i am or as, as actually maybe bleacher report and espn says these days i understand the assignment oh whoa cool first question actually uh how do you feel about prompt twitter i mean i, I don't really feel either way about prompt twitter i'm a fan of any segment of twitter though that creates a conversation um, eh, I was going to say no matter what that conversation is, but no, not always. definitely not. I, no, I got to say famously a very proud boy. <laughs> oh, <God. laughs> uh, uh, I will say pro- I'm not famously a proud boy. <laughs> <laughs> uh, prom Twitter is looking better and better these days, especially after what happened on Twitter today. I don't know. understand what happened on Twitter Yo. today, which is tweeting one word things of like what you're what you're all about. That I don't was the that. worst. Do you know how it started? No. So famously, Amtrak tweeted trains, which unequivocally is an incredible tweet. Were they the first, though? Like, or did you just see it first? I was told by coworkers 10 plus years younger than me that it was Amtrak that started it. And Amtrak tweeting trains, I think, is very good. It's like when Jeff tweets Jeff. That's just a really good tweet. (laughs) I find that funny. But. I didn't see a single other one that was good. Yeah, it was. It, they were all terrible. The only thing I, I somehow lo- missed this today. I'm a little bummed really. It was no good. One dude. word: describe yourself. Twitter. It was. It was rough. The only good part about it was that in the middle of all of it, the Jazz traded Donovan Mitchell to the Cavaliers, and Stephen A. Smith posted just like a normal Stephen A. Smith tweet, and it was like these. A bu- like number sign exclamation point dollar sign question mark New York Knicks and it was a video of him screaming about the Knicks so maybe he understood the assignment he didn't give a fuck about the assignment though he was still absolutely doing his thing so I loved that it sounds I'll tell you what though it sounds like you kind of do like prompt Twitter it, it's not the worst thing in the world I think that when you get into the what's my man's name Pete oh shit um Eric Alper uh, yeah, that thing where you just have like four tweets that you Recycle. take turns tweeting, and it's always like, "Who's a who's a funny lady?" <laughs> and then people are like, "I don't know," and they just like name a bunch of comedians. That's just cheap engagement, bro. All right, I'll let's tweet this with your favorite female comedian. <laughs> yeah, so I don't like that shit. Instead, we just make a stream out of it and do that exact same thing. Uh, all right, so. The, the first prompt is, let me see. What's a non-domesticated animal you wish you could domesticate domesticate and have as a pet? I will tell you Pete's answer was, a, Pete, what was your answer? A raccoon. 
Yeah, you had a a, a trash panda, mm -hmm. and I had a kangaroo because I like the idea of an angry pet punching a hole in the wall. <laughs> yeah, that's good. I mean, if like, but are, is it like an Aussie Rules football game that they have to lose in order to punch a hole in the wall? No, no just it's having just a bad like, day. Like, yeah, like like when you tell the the pet to get down or something, <laughs> or you're no. not giving it the attention it wants. As Pete said, it just goes over and Adam drivers the wall. <laughs> Oh, that's when your pet kangaroo will just fake throw an already broken TV after the Aussie Rules football game goes the wrong way for him. And then he puts right. it on Twitter to get his Twitter clout. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> he retweets, here we me, come. I think for me, I, I have been told that I look like an animal. And I've always liked the idea of animals looking like their owners. And so I think I am going to go with an otter. Uh, I can, I've heard that they are somewhat vicious in nature. That being said, they look like chill little dudes when they're floating around on their back. And I was always privy to the backstroke whenever it was uh, whenever it was swimming time in elementary school or something. Just floating around on the back and just enjoying myself. I don't hate I don't... that answer at all. I, I, an otter in the bathtub would be quite the scene. <laughs> <laughs> that mm -hmm. would be funny. I mean, especially in a one-bathroom household <laughs> where suddenly the otter taking baths is now competing with any children that might need to shower the classic like insert Steve Martin movie where everyone wakes up and they're running to the bathroom door and it doesn't matter because no matter who gets there first, the otter has been up for a couple hours and is just in the bath. <laughs> and oh, just, like and, uh, the otter doesn't turn off the, 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 the bathtub faucet. So the water is just pouring over the sides of the bathtub while it backstrokes back and forth like three feet. Yeah, it's a yeah, dumb is, otter. It's got to be like as dumb as a dog. Well, yeah. What does he know about how, like you know normal plumbing? He doesn't care. He just wants it to be as wet as possible in nature, which nature is now my condominium. Any, especially any of these newly domesticated animals are the first generation of domesticated otters, raccoons, and kangaroos. So. Even if they are domesticated, like when Pete and I were discussing it, we were like, oh, what if it screws up and does this? Oh, no, never mind. It's domesticated. It'll be a good pet. Not true at all. If it's the first domesticated otter ever, yeah, it is absolutely chunking your plumbing. And I mean, the, the raccoon is probably just tracking stuff is my issue with the raccoon. It's, it's picking up all your garbage. It's eating all your garbage. So like you, you're saving a lot of time throwing shit out. Uh, Igneous says otters are famously a good sitcom pet. I don't know. Does this that. happen in any sitcom or are you just projecting? I hope it's the latter. I do like the I would idea. I'd love to know what sitcom there is. Same. With an otter as a pet. I do like the idea of finding out what like the intelligence ceiling is for like uh all these new domesticated animals. Because we were talking about like uh, you know, I think that a raccoon would probably be pretty stupid regardless of like how well you domesticated it, how well you trained it. I think it would probably yeah. be pretty dumb. I feel like the kangaroo could be pretty smart, maybe too smart for its own good. It knows it's stronger yeah. than you. It knows it can kick your ass. So I love it. You're you're I basically that, that, that kangaroo's bitch if it's if it's smart enough. <laughs> like you come home when you have a puppy and it's teething and like all the corners of your furniture have little like teeth <laughs> marks and you're like, oh no, the dog did this. You come home and you find that the a kangaroo just like smashed a fucking chair. <laughs> <laughs> because like the it's mailman the came off the wall <laughs> oh man we we did uh we hit up a, a famous artist to uh do new brunch art that's a kangaroo a well-behaved domesticated kangaroo that's wearing an apron with a joey oh also will the joey has a really tough time with this domesticated kangaroo because the kangaroo is punching everything punching the owner breaking chairs the Joey just wants to grow up normally. Mm -hmm. I get that. I mean, it, it's kind of like, it's like you're now that Joey's stepdad. And there's a, I think there's a natural reaction to kind of putting your guard up towards you. So it's going to be a long road for you and your Joey to really bond. If you, if you have to put down the domesticated kangaroo, is there oh, a, shit. is there an adoption required? Yeah, I was gonna, I, so yeah. I wasn't even going to say that. I was going to say like, is there a Leon thing where it's like, well, obviously I'm not getting rid of you. You have to stay. Not like you're forced to stay, but like, it seems like the right thing to do to hold on to the Joey and raise it. 
That Absolutely. Joey would have quite the life. Um, somebody said a polar bear would be dope. Think about all that bear to cuddle with. Somebody said Lyle Crocodile. I haven't seen the movie yet, so I don't know. Uh, someone said a black bear. They're basically giant dogs anyway. If I see any sort of bear, I know that there are rules for certain bears. All you have to do is like bang pots and pans and they run away. If any, if I encounter any bear, whether they're docile or what, that bear is going to kill me. <laughs> Most Do you guys likely. know the rules? Most Do you guys likely. know the rules? Make a lot of noise. Yeah, but for which ones? No, I don't know. Yeah. It's, uh, if it's brown, lay down. Oh. If it's white, good night. That means you're just straight up dead. Yeah. And then I think if it's black, attack. So I think that's when you start making the ruckus really <laughs> don't please do not quote me on this if you ever find yourself in nature squaring up with a bear i think the blood the is most, on will's hands i think yeah. it's the most important thing that we all just don't really know or care about like there are rules for this hey like when you see this bear this is what you do and i've never met a single person who actually has them memorized and knows what to do i mean i'll tell you there's a zero percent chance that i'm ever laying down if i come across like a, a grizzly bear like wh what yeah are you fucking serious there's zero chance that i'm not like screaming and running as fast as i can in the other direction are you aware that they teach kids in – I mean, I'm sure you're aware of this. They teach kids in Florida how to run away from uh, crocodiles or alligators, whatever they are. I guess alligators. Oh. Do you zigzag? Because you have to weave. And so they make these kids just run through this, like, the field just zigzagging. I saw, I saw an alligator on a golf course. That's got to be common. Actually, I've seen it multiple times. That's common, right? Yeah. It was like – it wasn't in the water, though. It was, like, straight up on the course. It was, sun, it was sunbathing. Is that what they do? I think so. You just you just leave them alone. Yeah, that's what I chose to do. Other, other people I was with went up and they were taking pictures of it. And I was like, <laughs> risk reward. I think people will just believe yeah. if you say I just, saw an Just alligator. airdrop me your picture, please. That That's actually exactly what I did. I was <laughs> like, hey, I'll post that if you just send it to me. Um, all right. We have a washed media related prompt. And that is, who in the washed media universe would thrive in a deserted island scenario, and who would get eaten first? Pete, I'll toss this one to you first. Uh, as far as Thrive, I feel like I'm going to say... Uh, I, I'm going to pick Dave. I feel like mm. Dave might thrive. I don't know Dave super well, but I feel like Dave could be very resourceful. And... So it seems like an intelligent guy. Will, you you just seem like a you like the finer things in life. And I, I, I don't see you really Pete dropping hard peas on the stream. Well, <laughs> is there is there a, like a, a nice yeah. resort on this island that has like, you know, my ties and stuff? Because that sounds nice. See, that's that's, that's where I thought Will would go. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um So I'm gonna die first, probably. I don't think you would get eaten first. I would say uh I would say Randy gets eaten first. Randy would be like Ooh. trying to snap some like pretty uh pretty dope like self timed picks for the gram and would just get eaten by an alligator or something. Love that Randy's Randy's got the content wheels turning. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> Randy would be like, "What would be the most entertaining way for me to get eaten on this island for for the RTs for the brand?" If he knows that death is inevitable on the island anyway, like he would die in the most the best way possible. Like he would be like. Man, I just hiked this waterfall, like, but I'm pretty low on food. Maybe it's time for me to just pull off this waterfall live on Instagram. Does Randy say the word epic? No. Okay, no. so never heard I it. good. Not that it's there's a problem with saying epic, but I there feel definitely that, like, is. I feel that the stereotype that we're leaning into with Randy is veering into like epicville, and I don't get that from Randy. I no, get no, he doesn't do that. I get I get fun and like hard competitive fun. Well earned. Well earned See, fun. Can I add a, an element to this uh this this prompt? Is that allowed on this show? Of course. It's like the number one rule. You're allowed to add elements. Okay. Uh my added question to this would be who would be the first like say this was like a group scenario. Who would be the first to turn cannibal? 
Oh, love that. Uh, Dylan. <laughs> Ooh. Dylan. He, he likes a good hard truth bomb, and he would finally get to the point. And he also is the most hangry person I've ever met in my entire life. So he would get to the point where he would just be like, we're eating Will tonight. That's how it is. That's what we're doing. We're eating Will tonight. So I was going to say, I think Dylan is the first to subscribe to the concept of cannibalism in that he would straight up offer himself to me and say, hey, look, if you need to eat somebody, I'd be honored. And then like he dap me up and I'd be like, what an awesome guy. And I probably wouldn't eat him. And then there would this be this kind of weird will they won't they dynamic between us. Has there ever been a movie where they don't actually just eat somebody or anything, but they just eat part of somebody? It's like, you know what? Tonight we're having Will's arm. You know, it's going to be really inconvenient to, to do his chores around the island for the next however long. But, I mean, could you ever just, like, eat part of somebody and just stitch that up with some, like, straw? No, I, I, mean, think, I think it's it's one of those situations once you get that taste, you're hooked. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and I'll true. tell you what, I don't think any of us are uh, are cauterizing Will. I don't think that... If we cut off somebody's arm, I believe your next move is you got to cauterize the hell out of that, right? Yeah, I, I don't, don't think, think we're doing that. Yeah, I think yeah. It's yeah, it's a lot of work. <laughs> exactly. Mm -hmm. I th And I think that mm -hmm. we would consider cutting the arm off to be the worst part. But then once we've already been through that and there's just like a lot of pressure and everything, I think we would just – we'd be like, does anybody have a belt? And we know it wouldn't work. And we'd like put the belt on and be like, oh, it didn't work. We thought this was going to. We did everything right. Sorry who, to whomever dies. Uh, Dave in the chat says, uh, in The Walking Dead, they eat a guy's leg but leave him alive. But then they find out that he was already bitten. Tainted meat. Yeah. Yes, tainted. he'd been bitten. Remember wow. that? No. I, I feel and he's like screaming I... at it. He's like, tainted meat. And he's like, oh, in your face, you losers. <laughs> yeah. Damn. That'd be, a real, they... that'd be a real last, uh, last ditch gotcha. Be one last, one last prank on the boys. Yeah. Mm, do you do you enjoy that leg, fellas? Well, here's who, the thing. Uh, Will, who uh, who's who's thriving? Who's getting eaten first? Yeah, I actually think that Randy is my choice for the thrive one because what you guys don't see behind the scenes is that Randy is just an absolute busy bee. He cannot sit still. He cannot just not be doing something. And so, he, I feel like he would be building shelter be foraging for berries he would be but he, the thing is he would be doing content all while he was doing that and so just be like he would thrive in this situation more than i i just can't imagine how he would do badly in this situation he also loves extreme heat what? like i he's from chicago and he knows what cold weather's like but i he's like a lizard now he just wants to be down in austin texas and never return to any cold ever again and so I just see no scenario where I don't see Randy just loving it. I mean, I, I get the loving the extreme heat thing as long as you know you're getting yourself into it. That's an, that's not the worst mm -hmm. lifestyle. Randy's uh, just addicted to popping the tarps. Yeah, that that's mm -hmm. probably it too. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, as far as who goes first, like, especially if it's cannibal time, mm -hmm. I think I'm a good option. Like. I've always, I've kind of always thought that like my lack of physical activity over the last 10 or so years outside of like, you know, getting on the Peloton train during quarantine, like everybody else in the world. Um, like I have some really good meat on my bones. That's just ripe for the taking. It's like veal. It's just never been really touched. Like it's never like nothing's ever really happened to it. I've never broken a bone or anything. So like, you know, that that meat is just like untouched. And I think I'd be a good person to actually like kebab. Wow, I don't know if this will make you feel better or worse, but uh, is the kebab well, part you... for you, or is it for that for the other people? Um, I mean, I just I'd prefer to not be alive if you guys like you know put me on like a pole and like slow roast me or anything. Okay, mm. just kill me first. That's all I ask. Okay, yeah, that's fair. Definitely, uh, a little gotcha journalism for you boys. I did ask. I did give this prompt to Randy himself, and his answer was thrive me not survive will <laughs> <laughs> nailed it i mean there you go so you guys are in agreement um all right for thrive i honestly think 
And famously, I've not met much of the washed media family in person, but I get strong resourceful vibes out of Dylan. He's a, he's a scientific cat, right? Silence I'm, is I'm getting, I'm getting here. a this is incorrect vibe Yeah, from silence Will. is definite. No, 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 no. It's not incorrect. Uh, Dylan is, you know, he's he he loves being a dad and like he is such a good caretaker and he's so direct about that kind of stuff that like he'll just handle shit. You know what I mean? Like he'll just go and handle it. But I don't know. He he can get real pouty real quick, especially if that tum tum is not full. And so I just uh. worry that like, if there's any chance that there's like, oh, oh, and this is, this is my selling point. Actually, I think Dylan's not thriving anymore. Dylan hates touching fish. Oh. And so if he has to go spear fishing or regular fishing or whatever, he's not going to do well touching the fish. He hates touching fish. You can't, that's the weirdest aversion I've ever heard in my life. There's nothing less doesn't... scary than like a, like a fish fish. Like they're just slippery. Like it's not. Yeah. Like, it's not like we're dealing with sharks here, Dylan. Like it's just a slippery fish. He thinks they're slimy and gross. But that's okay. like, to Dylan's credit, he would do extremely well on uh, dating sites because not only is he handsome and in shape, but he won't have a picture of him holding up a fish, which is famously exactly. a massive red flag on dating sites. Is that a thing? People, if if they see you holding, and, yeah. and guys do the the fish pick. Guys do a lot of the fish picks, and girls are like, why do guys think that we want to see pictures of them holding up fish i love i think that's so funny <laughs> just on both sides that like the guy thinks it's cool and may i mean may maybe for for certain people maybe it is cool yeah like, if you're if you're like if you're trying to date somebody who's like into that lifestyle put it out there but i think there are just like a lot of guys that are just like here's a picture of me holding the fish i'm not particularly passionate about it but here's a picture of me with a fish isn't that cool yeah. I, went uh, to, I went to yeah it's just like i went to colorado one time yeah, I yeah. caught a fish there on my guided trip. I, I catch and release. My friend's got a boat. So mm -hmm. I, I thought Dylan would thrive, but maybe uh, I've been uh, proven wrong there. I know I'll be right on this one uh, as for who will get eaten first. I actually heard uh, some of, I think it's going to be me because I overheard a bunch of the washed guys talking about me earlier and they, they were calling me a snack. So <laughs> I'm probably going to go first, unfortunately. So I don't, I don't like the shit talk behind my back, but. That was the terminology they were using. They're saying you see DJ. Uh, Bluegrass Traveler said, uh, I think it's one of the few times their their picture will be taken. When when guys post pictures of the uh, fish. I don't know if that's ah. like stereotyping, but it, sometimes it is like the type of person that posts a picture of, of their fish. It's not a person that's photographed often. Um, Let's see. Let's see the chat. It's the implication of the fish. Pick. <laughs> you know, you know what it is. It's the I like implication. That. Uh, you guys want some answers uh, from the other washed guys? Brett says, "Oh man." Brett. Brett says, "Will is toast," and Dave is savvy enough to survive, if not thrive. Dylan and I would be in the middle. And we'd kill Randy over something annoying. <laughs> Fair. That's. I don't know if Brett was aware that this was going to be read. That was. <laughs> well, but here's the issue with picking me first, and and this I not I truly truly believe this. I'm too competitive to die first. I'll kill someone first before I die first because I just uh -huh. can't I can't have that. Like, if if everyone gets found on the island like a, an hour after I die. Like, I don't, I can't deal with uh, the PR of like, yeah, there was one death on the island. It was Will. And then everyone's like, well, yeah, that makes sense. And I can't have that. I would rather take someone down with me and be like, wow, we lost two people. And, you know, I, and sorry, I devastate one of your families. Like, I, I apologize for that. But I need to make sure that my name is cleared when it comes to survival. That is I also so watch true. a lot of I feel like this prompt is being twisted because the, like, they, the prompt is like, who would thrive on a deserted island, which I assume means like you're the only person on the island. And now we're just discussing like who would kill the other people. <laughs> and no, but they're saying who gets eaten first, I believe, right? Was that yeah, who gets yeah, eaten you first? I think, I think it, they meant like if we're all there. Oh, so I, I didn't even like uh so I didn't even introduce the cannibal part. I thought like get eaten first meant by like an animal, like a wild animal. All right. Okay, so if it's the whole gang. 
Who's getting eaten first? Okay, yeah. That's where I... That's I'm imagining it being like Stone Cold Steve Austin's, you know, fa- uh, famous movie, Condemned, where mm. they just go to an island and tape it and everyone dies. I do think, hopefully I'm not insulting anybody, because I was working my way backwards. I was like, okay, Pete and I probably aren't great candidates to to thrive. I think that as far as like resourcefulness goes, we might be in a similar class, but I don't know if it's the highest it's class. It's not a high then, class. Yeah, and then I started to think of everybody else, and not to say like, oh, everybody seems like a dime, but I think that kind of the washed media vibe is I'd like to go somewhere with air conditioning, please. <laughs> so it is a good, so sure. this was a good prompt. This is a good group to give this prompt. To. I would also, I, I mean, I would feel very safe not being the first person eaten because there's, there, there's no reason to eat me first. The, I agree there's, with there's that. Small portions, uh, not a ton of fat. Like you're not killing and eating me first. There's probably not a confrontation to like. There's always the possibility that one of us mouths off, and they're like, "Well, we got to eat somebody, so it might as well be this asshole." I don't think that you're pissing anybody off, Pete, within the first however many days. I think that you're, if anything, I think that you're the person that people would go to and be like, "Look, so we got to do something about so and so, huh?" <laughs> I, don't, I don't know. Appar- well, apparently, 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 Brett there. and Dylan are sidebarring to to kill and eat Randy. Yeah. Dylan says, by the way, Will gets eaten week one, like before the starvation even sets in. I am best in that scenario or Randy. <laughs> no, Dylan is not best in this scenario. I also don't think Dave is best. I think I think out of everybody circling back would not survive very well. We pamper ourselves too much when it comes to like sitting at home and doing nothing at this point. We all have kids like we're not doing anything. Uh, somebody says, wait, where is it? Uh, blue, Ga- blue grass traveler says it depends on what kind of bears are on the Island. <laughs> it's true. true. By the way, folks, you can submit prompts on the brunch. Patreon. Appreciate you. We Lower got left uh, corner of the screen or uh, command Patreon. Whoa, that's sick. I promised there would be an announcement about the Patreon uh, on this very stream. Here it goes right now. Tomato Fights will be returning next week. We have a bonkers matchup that we've wanted to do for a little while. Hint, fantasy football season is among us, so it's kind of related to that, sort of. But it'll be next week, and that's going to rock. Let's go through some of these comments. Uh, uh, Rachel also made the snack joke. Ah, uh, there you go. Uh it, it had to have been before I said it, too, because I don't think they're saying I think it after so. I said yeah. it. So famously, I'm just jacking from the the chat. Um, is this Lord of the Flies? I famously never read that. I just totally skipped it. Good book. Uh, yeah? Yeah. All right. Uh, this is the uh, third question that you uh, sent through, I believe. Yeah, which one do we want to do? uh, If you could go to any college besides the one you went to, which Uh, one would you choose without academics considered? Pete and I are going to have the same answer because this was actually an episode of Brunch when we were watching the critically acclaimed Hulu show, A Teacher. Uh, Will, where did you go to college? Uh, Hold on, what is a teacher? Oh, you didn't watch A Teacher? Man. What kind of awesome night are you, bro? Man. Oh, was it a UT? No, nah, dude, I'm a shitty Austinite. I'm like the worst. I'm the classic transplant that's ruining it. Nice. Uh, I love a teacher things. was like one of like the seminal pillars of, of brunch um, entertainment watching because it was such an outlandish, outrageous show. Hopefully outlandish and yeah. outrageous. It's, um, it's the, the Hulu show with Kate Mara where uh, she's the teacher in high school and she fucks one of her students. And yeah. okay. it is a wild ride. It's a lot. We spent most well, of our time discussing it, discussing Kate Mara's husband in the show, who is a doctor, very successful, and all he wants in life is just to start a band with his friends. And it's the like best. he comes He's home one he comes folks. home home one day with like ten thousand dollars in instruments, and his wife, who is fucking a teenager. Is like, how dare you? You are going to ruin this family. 
And we spent about four weeks discussing that entire idea. Yeah, it was. Uh, oh my god, it was so amazing. We had a still that we used. We got to start bringing it back. We use it yeah, for every do. possible meme, and it's when she walks in and she's like, "Honey, where are you?" And he's like, "In here." And she opens the door to like their spare bedroom where they're supposed to raise a child. Yeah, that's like a. And it's like supposed to be a nursery, and and there's just there's instruments like a everywhere. Shit. Five Les Pauls, <laughs> like a Marshall stack, and the look that he has on his face is like, I know it's <laughs> fucking cool, right? <laughs> amazing see now i have to go see it now i'm gonna go see it i apologize yeah oh that is true eric ripperson says in the a teacher universe blunt circles have a blunt for every person wild stuff remember that pete yeah i think that's when they're at ut yeah they're all sitting around smoking blunts <laughs> each individual like they're blunt. having cigarettes <laughs> yeah. yeah i've met a lot of ut kids in my day and i can't imagine them doing that <laughs> Heavy subject matter, but hilarious show. There is a scene where he's like riding on top of a Jeep, uh, just like standing up on a Jeep that's off-roading, going like 60 miles an hour, and he gets thrown like 100 feet when the Jeep slams on the brakes. And that was just a thing that happened in that show. Will, yeah, basically. I really, think, I really think that you would like this guy in particular, Matt, He's the he's the guy in season. Have you seen Succession? Yes, I've seen Succession. He's the guy that uh, may contain spoilers or prompts. Um, he's the guy that stoops Shiv in season one. That guy. Okay. But his band I like sounds. That, guy. that guy's cool. He's a cool guy. She brings uh, the teacher brings other teachers to see his show, and it's like a look. Sorry, this is embarrassing. My stupid loser husband just needs people to come to this club and pay the cover. They're so embarrassing. He's going to play songs by like Wilco and stuff. And I'm like, wow, that guy sounds incredible. Yeah. Which Wilco Let's songs go. is he going to play? <laughs> yeah, which ones? Amazing. Uh, so, yeah, my answer would be UT. I like it. The first time I traveled to Austin, just walked around there, and it was the first time I'd been in another city where I was like, "Fuck, I should have gone to college here." Yeah, it's. Uh, I was like a, initially like leaning towards like like ASU is like the easy one because it's like the biggest party school and it seems like a whole lot of fun. But like you know, that seems like a very standardized answer, and also I just don't think that I would survive. I think I would literally die. If I went You'd to be an first. ASU, yeah, I'd be, I'd be eaten first at ASU, a hundred percent. But no, I mean, like, I would definitely, definitely pick uh, UT, if only for like to stop the questions of why do you like the Longhorns? You didn't go to UT. Yeah. The answer that is would help you out greatly. Yeah, it would definitely help me out greatly. I, yeah, I just I went there. The, the true answer is that college football sucks in the Northeast, and I went to austin at the time that i was looking for a college football team and i was like they've got one here and i love this city so i'm picking this one and burnt orange is they've got good gear it's a cool school good logo i don't appreciate i, I don't appreciate football state why do you like blank yeah well, let like, me live my life like i i listen to ween ask about that instead I have a guitar. Ask me if I play it. <laughs> People, yeah. Uh, during the quarantine when we'd uh, have to do, like, TV from our apartments, every now and then a guy would be like, oh, a nice guitar in the background. Be sure to let us know you play guitar, you fucking tool. I bet you don't even play that. It was like, uh, actually, in fact, I'm such a loser that there is not a room in my apartment other than a bathroom that doesn't have a guitar that I play poorly. So why don't you ask me? Clear what I play instead. He's clearly not a Vineyard Knights guy. That's right. No. no. Or a Vineyard Knights guy. Yeah, yeah. You don't know nothing. Or a Vineyard Knights nothing. guy. Famously. Oh, are you guys taking in like esteem at all? I know I know. Austin is a very esteemed school. Um, because like, I know that you guys are spoiled in the Northeast, but part of me, and I don't think this is my official answer, but part of me is like, I should go Ivy just so I can flex on people for the rest of my life and be that asshole. Yeah. Yeah, and that's like, does that, does that, so it says without academics considered. 
But uh, is that like without yeah. considering the academics for like your own personal benefit? Because it doesn't sound like you're using it to like your your intelligence benefit, but more social standing benefit. Exactly. I don't care if I actually like am smart. I care if people think you're smart. People at parties are intimidated by me <laughs> because of where I went to school between the ages of 18 and 22. You know what's a really cool one though? If you if you want to pick an Ivy, I would love a non Ivy awesome school, like a Stanford, something like that because that's I didn't go to an Ivy League school. But I definitely got into them, and I just chose to go to Cali. What's up? It's, it, it gives you all of the, the – it lets you flex in a lot more ways. My question is, uh, how long does the, um, like the intimidation factor last for like a Harvard or an Ivy League school? Because I think like once – at this point, if like somebody told me they went to Harvard, I wouldn't be like intimidated or like impressed. I'd be like, huh, oh, good for you. But like that doesn't that doesn't mean anything to me. Yeah. It, it where I think like it may matter around like our age is like meeting your future in laws. Like if your future in laws are like he went to Harvard, they might be impressed. That might earn you some points for that from them. You know who's got to be the easiest people in the world to lie to? In-laws? Like seventy year old people. <laughs> mm-hmm. They yeah, don't have the internet. Anything. Have you ever? Yeah. Asked, well, that, what about uh? What about um? Oh, Carol Burnett. <laughs> yeah, it's Carol Burnett. And uh, Robert De Niro from Meet the Fockers famously or, was big on uh, background checks. I thought you were going to say Robert De Niro from The Intern because he was a very good intern. So I bet he was pretty technologically savvy. True. But he didn't, No, there's no way Robert De Niro knew how to print anything wirelessly. No not way. in The Intern. Intern, no. No. But he was, a, he was, ahead, of, he was ahead of the curve in Meet the Parents, though. He was like... He was fucking phoning up like uh, PIs. He was like pulling up databases in his basement. I think this was like before like the internet was even invented. That guy had some advanced technology. Hmm. Can I offer my official answer for this, which Do I it. just thought of? My official answer is somewhere. I kind of I know I'm gonna regret this answer at some point. But one weekend, I, I went to a college campus and. Uh, within hours of being on campus, I was I fell in love with the entire place. They had a, an amazing beer garden near the water uh, that you could use your swipe card to, to just go get pictures of beer at. Uh, I went to a sorority party where every girl looked the exact same, and it was a great, great thing. Um, and and we went to a, I, we went we were around the football stadium, and it was just like classic Big Ten ambiance. It was Madison, Wisconsin. And I absolutely fell in love with everything. Yo, I love it there. so I, uh, I have a friend who went to Wisconsin and that I was going to say that's my runner up. I, and I don't know why, just something about people who went there fucking loved it. And I also think it's really cool. Like I'm from Massachusetts and not too many people went too far. I think that like, if you're from New England, typically you go to school, I think in Boston or in New England, but just because there's decent schools there. But to go from the Northeast to Wisconsin, that's an impressive move, I find. What about to go from Wisconsin to the Northeast? Because that's what uh, our guy Stan did. Oh, true. He's from Wisconsin. And Rachel in the chat says, drinking in Wisconsin is laughably cheap. Wow. So as a college kid, that would be a huge bonus. Yeah, Wisconsin worry sounds great. About, yeah, going to school in a place like Boston, you know, I don't want to go to school in a place where I have to worry about um, like bar tabs that are more than twelve dollars or like, IDs like that. Like for like yeah. two or three of the years that you're in college, you either got to have a fake if you want to go to the bars, or you just like have to find a bar that doesn't ID you. Yeah, the beautiful part of being in a college town is knowing that like the person checking IDs doesn't care, and the oldest person in the establishment is, you know, 23 years old and on yeah. their fifth year. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Are there, we can wrap up with this. Patreon.com slash listen to brunch, by the way. Appreciate y'all. Are there any sports or extracurriculars that you plan to have your kids do for their benefit, even if they don't love doing it? I'm asking because I took one piano lesson and hated it, but now have to accept that I'm never going to learn to play piano. Will famously, You've got 
you got one on the way to being two. How old's your kid? He's he's uh, a year and four months. Yeah, so he's on the way to being two. I, I was faking yeah. you out. I was trying to sound like I didn't know that your child was already born, but famously, <laughs> uh, famously, you got that kid. Yeah, my child is famously a human. Oh yeah, because he's he's actually said some pretty impressive things. Yeah, the, the D's nuts jokes that he's making, oh. hilarious. Very funny. Yeah, kid. those are good. That's a very I funny. I'm kid. like, yeah. you know, it's funny because I'm like, oh man, that's kind of inappropriate, but it's so cute when he does it <laughs> that I just can't get enough. And he just he just um, leaned right in there, huh? And he then he said D's nuts to you. Weirdly that's... enough, the 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 thing that I want to take him to do is something that we've already talked about today. You guys have allowed me to come up with yet another reason as to why I want to do this. Getting you stranded to, on a desert you, island. Yeah, you want to <laughs> survival your child skills. On a desert. Yeah, no. you want to dump your kid on an island. Yeah, he's my Wilson, and I will be talking to him the, for the entirety of my trip to the island. No, uh, it is it is absolutely fishing. I want to take him fishing because I want him to either dedicate his life to it and love fishing for the rest of his life, or I want him to hate it and never think about doing it again. My dad took me at too young of an age to appreciate or to not appreciate fishing. He took me at an age that I don't really remember if I liked it or not. And now all I can think about all the time is like, should I try to fly fish? Should I be a fly fisherman? Should I, should I go out to the river? I bought like a rod recently just because I'm thinking about it. And I'm like, what am I doing? I'm, I'm not, I, I don't think I'm going to go out and do this anytime soon. It would be really cool though to get into something at the same time as your kid. Be like, look, I'm... 44 you're eight we're both on the same page when it comes to fishing except with the exception of me famously already owning a rod you're a little behind but other than that our knowledge is that, that could be demoralizing though like if your kid ends up like just being real good at it and is smoking you out of the water from the get-go that would be humbling to a to a demoralizing degree that's happening though when i'm teaching when like I'm getting my kid piano lessons within probably a year. I bet they're going to be better at piano than I ever was. And I'll be like, yo, I, but at least suck. you can say that you were better when you started. Yeah. At least you had like say, some advantage. I'll have that year of being like, yo, you suck at piano. <laughs> yeah. Make him flinch. That's right. Well, there's the saying that if you teach a man to fish, he eats for the rest of his life. Mm -hmm. There's That's also true. the saying that if a man teaches his son to fish, eats for the rest of his life and does not have to do the work. And that is maybe the goal is to allow my son to catch my fish for me and allow me to survive on this deserted Island. I'm dumb enough to ask, is that actually the second half of that expression? No, no. I no. would love if it were a longer expression <laughs> about making somebody else do shit for you. And we just lopped it off because the beginning part was a lot nicer. <laughs> like, yo, if you just it didn't teach the, the morals. That, I mean, that is that's like exactly what the like the the saying is getting away from because the first right. half of that is giving a man a fish. <laughs> right. I do. Yeah, but if you teach I a man, to, but if you teach a man to give a man a fish, yeah, then we've completed the circle. <laughs> I do love that. Just bringing it all the way back to the starting point. That's like a Michael Scott type of thing. <laughs> That's really good. Uh, I think my answer to this would be uh, that I want I would teach my kids, and I don't think it would take much convincing, but I would teach my kids to play video games. Because playing video <laughs> games with your kids seems like a fun, a real fun time. And it's something that is ne they're never really going to grow out of. They're going to keep that their entire life. And it'll probably keep them out of trouble. And at this point, by the time I have kids, like playing video games is going to be lucrative as hell. So it's pr probably safer than teaching them to play sports, Sh teach them to play video games. To... They could buy me a lot of fish and I won't have to go fishing. Plus you never have to really spend time with the kid. Just give them that screen time. They'll get sucked into that video game for five hours. That's easy. <laughs> That's right. You don't have to take care of them. Uh, I'm actually going to have my kids learn how to stop global warming and and all disease and hatred. Those are my priorities personally for the world that I want to leave behind for my children's children. Other than that, they definitely have to learn piano, but 
in the event they don't like music or piano, I will also make them do karate and a bunch of other shit. Ideally, I'll find the things that they don't like. Say they don't like karate. I'll make them do piano and karate. That way, piano will be their escape from karate. And they'll work really hard and get really good at piano. They really need to know their theory. Is there any hobby or sport that you did not play as a child that you now regret now not playing or not uh, doing? Skateboarding. It's all, I, I've games. said this a million times. Skateboarding. It's like I feel like the I've I've there are not many things that like I feel like there's an age cap on, but skateboarding is absolutely one of them because like as a thirty year old, it is very socially unacceptable to like break your wrist and be like i broke my wrist skateboarding at like 31 I'm years in, old i'm in danger of doing this as i famously bought a skateboard last month no and you didn't I'm, yeah yeah, yeah. yeah and did. i'm very excited to really injure myself and and just have people be real i've never broken a bone in my entire life knock on wood i'm gonna 100 percent break a bone on this stupid skateboard that i should have never purchased and yeah that's gonna happen is Maybe it a longboard or is it a skateboard the skateboard. Okay, no, he's like Jamie yeah. Thomas shit, dude. Hell yeah. <laughs> God like damn. Jeff Rowley shit, dog. I'm gonna Who let I'm it? gonna let Will fucking convince me to get back on the skateboard. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I was I was I was good at riding a skateboard. I wasn't good at doing tricks, Same. but I was good enough at riding because I have good balance and I like kind of cruising, kind of getting that skiing kind of feel thing. And uh, yeah, I just thought it would be a good idea one day. So I stood up from my desk and Dylan asked where I was going. I said, I got I gotta go do something. And then I showed back up with my new ride. <laughs> I could only do one move on the skateboard, but it was like a. It was on in like the second level of moves. I couldn't do like a normal ollie, but I could do like a. I think it was like a, one eighty kickflip or something. That was the only thing I could do. And the other skateboard kids were like, "If you can do this, then you should be able to do these things." And I just couldn't do anything but this one thing. It was really, really weird. It Are made you gonna... no sense to me. You, you're absolutely correct about like this. Uh, this actually makes sense, DJ, because doing for me doing a varial kickflip, yeah, was easier than doing a kickflip, which should not be the th the the thing. Is that is that varial kickflip the one where like you rotate? Is that what that is? The board rotates. I didn't rotate. Oh, okay. Um, are you planning on dropping in because? There is nothing That's scarier scary in the world. As fuck. Sky yeah. Skydiving and dropping in are on the same level. You can break your wrist, but like if you if you drop in, there's a chance that you're face planting and knocking out all your teeth. And then at that point, yeah. at that point, you have to in... you have to retire from like not only skateboarding but just going out in public. I'll drop in for charity. Oh no, you don't! Don't do that. I'm so scared for you. Because then they'll have to establish I've... another charity to like pay your medical bills. Right. But then, but then what just like just skydiving tell me charity? This. What if we have like, but then I have the video of all these people surrounding this mini ramp or whatever it is at the skate park, and it's just me dropping in, and these people go wild for just me just doing the bare minimum of dropping in. I think that would be a cool video. That would to be have. Cool. always thinking of the content. You ever see that video of the uh, of the guy dressed immaculately like the Joker? And I don't know if he's skateboarding or like BMX riding. And there are like a thousand, there's like thousands of people on both sides of him watching him do something. And he eats shit so hard and go and like goes head over heels and like goes across the pa pavement for like 50 feet and pops up very quickly in the crowd goes wild. Like that would be very cool. You got to dress yeah, like I've, a joker I've, though. Every time I go to the movies with uh, Dave, I always try to get him to dress as the Joker. Oh, it all no. Started, it all started when we saw the Joker. And I was like, well, Dave, are you going to dress up? And now every time I want, like when we saw Top Gun Maverick together, I was like, it'd be really funny if you showed up dressed as the Joker to this movie. And he said no. Uh, but I'm trying to do it so often that at some point Dave will say to himself, you know what? It'll make Will's day if I show up to this movie tonight dressed as the Joker. I'm going to do it. And there's going to be a time in my life where Dave might – show up to a movie dressed as uh heath ledger's joker that's horrifying i do like though the uh idea of the 900 reaction to you dropping in mm -hmm. it, it would be like x game style there would be people against like the fence and everything like huge crowd 
somebody i mean you you guys could oh. wash could make some I real want, like, content YouTube. of it i want you two with your skateboards like hitting the, like yes the coping yes. with your skateboards and like just going wild for we would buy skateboards oh. for this we wouldn't actually would get on the skateboards it would just be for doing this i'm gonna go i'm we're All gonna day. make a trip to austin and i'm gonna check a skateboard as my luggage actually Love that could that. be a no, carry-on yeah, that's the cool guy move is that you put it you put it on your backpack and you just like the skater on the on the flight. Wait, you can bring a, a skateboard on an airplane? It could I think when so. I was in high school because it, I made my parents let me do it on spring break one year because I wanted to be the cool guy that had a skateboard. So that cool. is what are they called at uh, airports? People movers? Yeah. Is that what they're called? Oh, those like that little is, like cart things? No, the uh, it's like a straight trying to sketch escalator. off the the handicap cart. No, it's like a straight escalator. Oh, the floor escalators. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> floor escalators. Yeah. That what you call them? Yeah, uh, whatever those are called. I think they're moving called sidewalks. Movers. Anyway, yeah, it, if you bring a skateboard on an airplane, it's like that on steroids because you're flying and also you're skateboarding. You are really lapping motherfuckers getting on that thing. <laughs> you think they let you like hitch on to the the drink cart? And as they pull it down the aisle, you're just skating, holding on to the back. Yeah. And if they say, they're like, hey, you're not allowed to do that, just be like, oh, what crawled up your butt? Hang loose, man. <laughs> Have you been talking yeah, like that? Skateboarding's not a crime. <laughs> yeah, legalize yeah, it, I will you? This bro doesn't even shred. keep telling Sally to stop harshing my mellow. I'm like, babe, <laughs> what's your problem? <laughs> I love that. I'm just trying to Talk catch to a your grind. Wife in, in skateboard voice. Uh, <laughs> Is anybody else doing skateboard voice these days? Maybe that's something we can appropriate, Peter. I don't think so. I don't. I don't. It just seems like you have a lot of California dreams. You want to go to Stanford and you want to do skateboard voice. It Mm. just seems like you you like the Chargers. You why don't you just move to California? Who knows? You never know. I'm desperately, I'm desperately trying to get these guys to move uh, the company to San Diego. Like, why not? Oh, we're already living in. We're already living in like a really expensive place that's our only going up. Like, let's just go to another one that's not an ocean. If that happens, famously, uh, I will uh, not resign from work. What do we do for talking about vampires, Pete? I would uh, resign from Merck oh, yeah, Mizzine, and one thousand percent go to San Diego. San Diego rocks. You guys know the South Park song about uh, San Diego? No. It's uh. <laughs> I'm going to send it to, to y'all after it's, I believe it's called Jack and it in San Diego. <laughs> and, uh, I like that. My, uh, it, my one trip to San I, Diego, I, I got like the most blackout drunk that I've ever been. And I, uh, like came to in the middle of the city. And I thought that I was in, uh, I was, I thought that I was back home and I couldn't figure out anything familiar. And it was really scary. <laughs> Yeah, that's no good. It was very scary, yeah. So, a little bit of PTSD when it comes to San Diego, but uh, I could I could try again. I will tell you what. <laughs> one, one issue with San Diego, the dogs might not even be domesticated. There is poop all over the sidewalks in, in San Diego. Uh, you you, you sure seen this? You ever noticed poop? this? Yes. Okay. Yeah, it could be person poop as well. But there is poop all over them sideies. It is crazy. Really? Yeah. Jacking it, jacking it, jackity jack. <laughs> That's how that song goes. Okay, well, I think that we've run through some very good prompts, and we appreciate everybody's participation, specifically Will DeFreeze. Will, is there anything that uh, you'd like to add? Maybe compliments you'd like to pay anybody on here or anywhere? You get you got something nice about the, the washed media family you'd like to say? Please do that now. Uh, no, I don't have anything nice to say about anybody. Uh, I would like to know what beers you guys are drinking right now. Ooh. Oh, I'm doing a uh, Wine Stefan, I believe is the name of it. It's a Hefeweizen. I famously suck those, and it's very good. I love it. I've Peter? got a uh, a Surf Melon, which is Ooh. a delightful beer from Portland, Maine, from Oxbow, Oxbow Brewing Company, which I'm also wearing a sweatshirt. Uh, it it is a offshoot of surf casting, which is one of my favorite beers from Oxbow, which is a farmhouse ale with sea salt and lime. This one has 
This is a farmhouse ale with sea salt and lime and watermelon. So it's crazy. It, it is very good. And I'm drinking it out of a uh, Gaffel Kolsch glass that I mm. uh, tried out at the bar last week. And I was like, I got to have this. It's got like the gold rim. Mm. I was like, this is very classy. So I just bought a four pack of these because I like I buying glassware. Th- I never think, hey, get me a Saison. But for whatever reason, Oxbow and those farmhouse sales, something about them just always hit. Mm. And it's like all they do, they just do farmhouse sales with a little bit of a twist. And they all taste like a little bit different, and they're all delicious. It's a great series. I love a, I love a farmhouse sale. Uh, I'm, okay, now I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to use my time now to say something nice about the Brunch Boys, okay? Uh-oh. Uh, Pete, I need to thank you, Pete. Uh, my in-law's neighbor is a big follow of your, follower of yours, and he recently saw, not recently, a few months ago, saw that you responded to a tweet of mine, and my clout score was just through the roof uh, <laughs> when I was walking up that driveway. I have never felt cooler than Hell when yeah. he was like, Will, what's up, dude? <laughs> Uh, also, uh, DJ, I really enjoy the fact that you and I are on a very similar trajectory in life. Uh, we're just like going to dead, like dead and company concerts, and I know Pete is as well. Um, I, there was something else that you're, you've been doing lately where I'm like, yeah, DJ and I are riding the same wave right now. Uh, suffering from depression? <laughs> yeah, that, oh, that's a good one. That's a good yeah. one. Uh, <laughs> let me think. It? What have I been doing? Skateboarding. Yeah, it was... No. It- you and I have been. You and I had a shared bond. Or what was it? I don't even remember. I mean, I I do, I I do feel the the kinship, for sure. Will that like we're, I'm brunches. Will and your as much as it will kill someone on your podcast to hear this. You're circling backs, DJ, for sure. That was when, that was uh, said when, before we even like had this partnership. No, Pete told me that. Yeah. yeah. Pete, I it was some, I, somehow you, you guys came up and I was like, "What's the deal with these guys?" Because Pete followed you guys and we were talking about uh, working together, and Pete was like, "They've actually got a guy that's just like you, and the only thing that could go wrong is that you two wouldn't like each other." And I didn't know which one he was talking about, and I, so I just listened to a few of the episodes, and I was like, who am I supposed to not like? And he was like, I don't think you're not going to like. He was like, but the one that's similar to you is Will. And I was like, oh, yeah, absolutely. That one's similar yeah, to Yeah, that me. makes sense. That makes sense. Uh, I don't know if we want to do this, but I'm going to propose it. Uh, you know, remember how, uh, like, when they mic up uh, baseball players on the field sometimes, they allow them to, like, nominate a player for the next week on, like, Sunday Night Baseball to be mic'd up? Oh. Will, would you like to nominate somebody to be the next guest on Prompted? I think I would. I mean, can I nominate anybody? Anybody you want. Just like I mean, anybody like somebody, anybody who's like them. attainable, please. <laughs> like Beyonce might be a tough get. This is difficult. This One is day we'll release difficult. a book of the people we've tried to, of the emails responding saying no, this person won't come on your podcast. My favorite thing that happened this week was that DJ reached out to somebody uh, <laughs> that we're working on a future project, like involving. And DJ reached out to them just so that he could say that they rejected the uh, the request to come on the podcast. A line in the VO needed to be, we reached out to so-and-so, but they wouldn't come on with us. And it was like, it was like when better, it was like when Saul goes to see the, uh, the, the Kettleman's and he needs them to like reject him. And when they screw him over, he's like, no, you can't do this. And then he walks out and he's got a grin on his face. Like it's all going according to plan. (laughs) When they got back and said, no, they can't come on because they're working. I was like, good. (laughs) And I believe, correct me if I'm wrong. The response came literally one minute later. It was one minute later. They said, no, they're working. (laughs) Not even enough time to check to see if they were working. Just immediately one minute later. I can't wait for people to find out who we're talking about. Yeah, now I need to know. I can't think of anyone to nominate right now. I don't want to just nominate some like Joe Schmo out of the Watch Media, you know, HQ. That's no fun for me. Mm. I want you guys to have to work for someone that I know is attainable. Hmm. I'm gonna have to get back to you. I'm gonna I'm gonna announce my my nomination uh, when I re-promote what we just did here. 
Okay. What That's a, fair. Could we get your uh could we get your son and then have people say that he was the worst guest in the world and he didn't do anything. He didn't even talk. He was really rude the whole time. He was just complaining that the 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 noise canceling headphones are hurting his eardrums and stuff. <laughs> yeah, he still has the headphones on. <laughs> that would be he horrible. can't get the USB mic to work. His yeah. response to every prompted question is just D's nuts. We're like, this guy's yeah. not even playing yeah. around, playing along. Classic yeah. seven. Classic seven. Dude, seven is so crazy sometimes. Oh, somebody says, will Pete or DJ help Dylan watch Better Call Saul's last season? I hope not. I see. I listened to your most recent episode, and very quickly Dude. found the last season of Better Call Saul. Dylan's trying to watch it, Pete, but he can't find it anywhere. He got AMC Plus, but it's not on there, and he's freaking out. He's like, "This is nowhere to be seen." So I did some. I got on my Carol Burnett bullshit and asked Jeeves. Found it placed right away, and texted it to Dylan and was like, "Yo, try this." He said that he'd tried it and that it didn't work. So. We'll see. Dylan is famously really working up a sweat trying to watch the final season of Saul, which I, I commend him for that because I want to be able to talk Saul with my buddy. I'm on season two, but I might start watching the final season just so that I can flex on Dylan. That would be incredible. <laughs> just beat him to the I punch. might just spoil it for myself just, just so I can make Dylan feel stupid. Yeah. Start making references and be like, oh, wait, you guys are caught off on Saul, right? <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. That's like, yeah, I, I was going to start just watching. I haven't seen Game of Thrones either. And I was just going to start watching Game of Thrones and just start dropping sick references and have them be like, wait, what? huh? How the hell is that? Everyone knows the Red Wedding, but how does he know about this like hyper niche character from, you know, season four, episode six? Amazing. Amazing. Hell yeah. All right. Well, this has been a lovely stream. We appreciate everybody who has come on. Thank you to Will. Thank you to Wine Stefan, thank you to uh, Oxbow, thank you to Shore Electronics. Everybody who submitted Streamline. prompts, appreciate you. Yes. Get on the Patreon if you're not there. And don't forget, next week we have uh, Tomato Fights coming. And if you're not on the Circling Back Patreon, that's the difference between you and me because I'm on there because they got that, got that great content. They give you two bonus things a week. So if you want a better bang for your buck, Patreon-wise, they do give more than Pete and I do, but we've got kind of a California, uh, I don't really care kind of vibe, and that's what you're paying for with us. So <laughs> love you. Bye, everybody. Bye. Thanks for having me on, guys. Have